Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to hand uh, actually these out today. Careful with the camera. Your chair. Oh, your coffee. <laughs> okay, you just got on your keys. Uh, all right. Um, so I'm trying to do these. This is kind of the first, the first run of these here. This is basically your payroll for. This is going to be on Friday. So I basically, after I do payroll on Tuesdays, I'm going to um, print these up so you can kind of see if if it's what you're expecting based on your own figuring out numbers and all that good stuff. That way, um, if there's an issue, you just kind of kind of see me. So obviously, it's up to you if you want to keep your payroll confidential or not. I don't see Ryan. Hi. Oh, right in front of me. Yeah. Oh, they they gave me Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't see Phil. I, I'm really not seeing James. Okay. I don't see Renard. James is on vacation. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, James is off today. Okay. So. Anyway, that's, that's just for you guys, um, for your own records, and if there's an issue or whatever, like I said, let me know, and then I can go over it with you, because I have it in my computer, so it's pretty easy. Um, so that was the first thing. Second thing is, I'm going to talk about the, uh, again, where, where we need to be going as a team. Um, you know, things right now, guys, I mean, it's... We're still kind of slow at the moment. I know how that you know, affects all of us, including us. I mean, we have things we need to get fixed. We have things we obviously need to, to take care of. Um, if you guys have an issue with your trucks, please let us know, like right away. Let me know. Don't tell Bryce. I don't want to hear the excuse I told Bryce. I, I'm just tired of that because I hear that like 50 times and then you know, Bryce says, oh, they never told me. And then it's like, it's this whole game that I've got to try to figure out. <laughs> so if something's broke on your truck that we need to fix, especially a safety concern, let me know so that I can arrange to try to get, fit things in with, you know, when we have money coming in and we can fix the things that need to be fixed. But um, I don't want you driving around with no brakes or, you know, something that's going to, no turn signals, whatever the issue is. The radio thing I could care less about. <laughs> You have your iPhones and everything else nowadays. You guys can figure out a radio. I mean, if, if radio's broke, that's not a priority. That's not a safety concern. But brakes and turn signals definitely are. So please let me know uh, when something like that happens to any of our equipment that we need to fix, not just the trucks. Um, so that's the first thing on that. And the direction that we're going, as we talked about in the sales. So, you know, John's been, been working hard the last couple of weeks. He's trying to learn everything he can and get into the sales process um, for the HVAC side. So for the HVAC side, and really that's going to be, you know, Mike, you, and your uh, brother from another mother, and, uh, right? and, and Renard's. So the three of you guys being on John's team, um, you guys need to make sure going forward because there's a lot of stuff that's happening that we're losing a lot of potential income. And when I'm going through the calls and I'm, I'm trying to go through some stuff all from December still that we just don't follow up on. We just, simply, we don't. I mean, it's plain and simple. And there may be good intentions on some of them, but it doesn't happen. And then when we do call the client, the client's upset because we didn't call them back. Like they were supposed to get back to me. Um, or they were supposed to bring me this part, or they were supposed to fix this, or, and we start, we're, we're going we're gonna to end up putting ourselves in a situation where our customers that were long-term good customers aren't going to want us to continue to be their service provi provider. Mm -hmm. So we really need to, to change how we're doing what we've been doing. So that being said, I'm going to start on the HVAC side because that's where a lot of this, a lot of this came from to start with. Um, so the, the, the process should be, when you get out to the job, you diagnose the problem, communication is key to him. So I want you guys on HVAC side, there's only two of you here right now really, to, to be calling him and letting him know where you're at, what's going on, is there something, that, a reason for him to come out? Because it's, we can call it the flip, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Um, his goal is get out there, build a relationship with the customer, walk him around the house while you're doing your, your thing, giving him and then giving him options of A, B, and C. And I say A, B, and C, that includes the, the cheapest fix. 
because when you guys are out there, I mean, you, you've got to have the mentality of saying, all right, well, yeah, this fix here, it's only $4,000 for an example. That's the, that's the low end. And then it's 10 and then it's 12 for an example, right? Well, number one, make sure you go through the notes and see what we've done on that client. You can go into You guys can do all of that very easily because you don't want to try to sell something to a client that's already been sold to them a few months ago or a year ago. They got a new condenser or whatever, right? And now you're trying to sell them a new condenser because you didn't check to see that we already sold them one. Um, I'm just throwing that as an example because that has happened recently. But if you look at only what you're going to make on your, on your bid calculator and you say, well, I don't want to give this lower option of $4,000 because I want to make this or I want to make this. If you're looking at that number constantly, you're going to be in a whirlwind and you're never going to make money. And it's going to be very rare that you're going to have a client that's going to say, okay, give him the options or give him the options. Let him be the guy that goes and sells what needs to be sold. Give him a chance because that's how the system really works. When Sarah's doing it in plumbing, it's going to be the same thing. So we got Jaweed. Um, and when he has a shirt, it's going to say J because that's maybe easier for people, he thinks. But uh, we have Cameron. <clears throat> um, you know, we have obviously Luciano and Phil. James and Jesse will be uh, rotating in a truck, hopefully, as we continue to train them. Um, obviously, we have <clears throat> Nick in the back as well. So Nick is going to probably be your easiest, Sarah. Nick will be the easiest one for you to work with most likely because you and him both have no problem selling but the flip process has to work with another person that's the whole key to this it's someone backing you up it's somebody coming in and validating and verifying everything that you've already told the client um, and then giving you pricing so it works if you use the process you make more money that way Works a lot better than just trying to do it on your own. I'm not saying you can't do it. Some, some people can do it on their own. Sarah does a great job doing it on her own. <clears throat> Nick does a great job doing it on his own. Doesn't mean it wouldn't be better. It couldn't be better having someone validate and verify when you go in there, right? So we need to start using the process, number one, with the HVAC side, calling John, getting him out there. Even if he doesn't sell anything on every single job, which he's not going to do because no one does that, but he's going to be able to make some money that way for all of you, for us. And he's going to learn things each and every time he's out with you. So keep in good communication and contact with him. He's probably going to have a little meeting for the two of you that are here um, this morning, just to kind of, after the meeting for five or ten minutes, just to kind of talk about a couple things. But just want to make sure that we're all on the same page as that. We have to use this process. We need to get our income up, and that's, going to, that's the way to do it. I mean, it really is. Um, on the plumbing side, my goal is as soon as possible to get Cameron in a truck. Obviously, I've got trucks i got to fix now that I didn't know I had to deal with, but I've got to be doing that. Um, <clears throat> but we got to get people in trucks so we can actually, when these calls start coming in in a couple of weeks, when our advertising starts kicking in and everything else, I want to be ready for it. So we're, we're going to need Sarah to be in her truck going from location to location, having her team and having them communicate to her as well. So if it's Jesse and James that are basically going to be rotating um, in a truck, whatever the case is, it doesn't matter. We need to be able to use in that process and calling Sarah, getting Sarah out there. Because Sarah won't make money if you don't call her. And she's going to be pissed if she's not making money. I can tell you right now just from what I do know about her. <coughs> so, Sarah's you always know. pissed. <laughs> so, so, the, so the thing is, guys, you know, because if Sarah comes to me and says, hey, this guy just won't call me, he just won't do this, he won't do that. Um, if it's because you don't want to do it, then you won't be in a truck. That's just the way it's got to be. Um, the bottom line is you've got to get her out there. Let her do her thing with the client. She's really good at it. Sell the job. She can move on to the next one. There'll be time that she'll be developing you and doing role playing too. I'm sure there's, there's going to be things that she's going to explain to you that works for her, how she sets up a client. So it's also a learning experience for you to understand how to do that process. Um, you got to have the customer trust you. You got to have them believe in you that you know what you're doing. You got to have confidence in yourself. All of that stuff is important. But whatever Sarah's doing is working. So you know, listen to her and learn from her from the plumbing side. Um, as far as the technicians are concerned, you guys are the experts in what you're diagnosing. Give John all of the options. Don't just give him 
option B and C. Make sure you give them A as well. The mentality of some people seems to be, oh, I'm not making enough money if I just do this repair. Don't, you know, it's not about that. Let us get in the door. <laughs> the goal is get in the door, get your foot in the door, start doing the work, and if there's something else to sell, that's up to John to sell. Just give him the options, he can sell it. All right? But get in the door and get some work. If you're going to look at this and say, well, gosh, I'm only going to make like 80 bucks. Well, if you walk away with a zero, you're not making anything. Mm -hmm. That's why this thing is important. This, this process is important to give all of the options because I'd rather get something than nothing. And, you know, I guess here's a, a, an analogy, a sports analogy that kind of stuck with me a long time. How do you win a baseball game? You got to get people on base to score, right? You can't hit home runs every time or expect it. Home run hitters don't hit home runs every time, you know, every time they come to bat. It's, it just doesn't happen that way. Um, or they walk them. <laughs> if they're that good, they walk them, right? They might get on base. On base. And, and then the guy who's on base. <laughs> well, exactly. If there's no, if there's no one on base, you can't win a game. There ain't no grand slam, no one's on base. And that's true. Um, but if, just trying to, just trying to, you know, even even the home run hitter, if they're going to walk him, he's okay with that because he gets to get on base. That's a potential run. That's all they care about. So you got to do that too. You got to take those base hits. You got to take those walks, whatever it is, to get on base. You have to do that. And because if you have that swinging for the fences every time, you might get one here, one there. Every every once in a while you're going to get one, but you're not going to be consistent. You're not going to make the money you need to make. Okay? So, and yeah. one big thing that I did is you can't just think about the money either. Because exactly. the customer is going to see that in your eyes. Like, you're going to know all you're thinking about is freaking money. So, like, one thing that I listen to this podcast about sales is stop chasing the cheese. Yeah. Stop have you ever seen have you ever, the Have you ever read the book? Have you ever, is have there, you ever, is there's a book, yeah. There? yeah. It's so true. Like, it's about the cheese. Like, stop just thinking about the money. <laughs> really fix their problems. Really focus on their right. solutions, you know? And then they can see that. And right. then they're like, oh, she actually cares. She's not just after my money. She's not looking at me like, you know, like she wants all my money. It's like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to do anything now, you know? Right. Well, yeah. So Somebody don't just them. think about the money while you're at the call. The, the money will come. The you money will come. Because yeah, right. there's something to fix. You're going to get in there and you're going to start finding more things and then they're going to already trust you. They see you're doing it. You've already got your foot in the door. Because that happens to me. When I'm thinking about the money because I'm like slow and I need the money, I need the money, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, so you got to just focus on, on the call. you got to just be confident in the price you get. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, right? The recirculation pump, guys, $1,850, I think it is in the book. Right. Don't be scared. They're going to ask you some questions, but there's a warranty on it, and let's face it, that pump goes out, you don't have it either. Yeah. <laughs> and you know you're fixing their problem, you know they need it, you're not right. just thinking about well, how much am I going to make on this job, oh, what am I going to make, you're actually thinking about fixing their problem, when you go and tell them, you're going to be giving them a good service, you're going to act like, you, they're going to know you care. Well, and one of the things that Kevin does, and, and John was explaining this to me, and it reminds me of someone that used to work with me. When you go into a house and you, you're giving estimates on things, so I want you to think of something maybe a little bit different than maybe you've thought before, I'm hoping here. When you go in and you give option A, option A may be just to fix the problem we went there for today, right? By the time you get to B and C, you bundle things, okay? I'm still going to fix A, but in addition, your vents are really dirty. Normally we would charge X. But instead, if I bundle this together, basically, I'm going to be able to give you a substantial discount because I'm already here. I got to come back tomorrow. I can bring the machine with me. You know, I already got to come back tomorrow to fix this and get the parts, blah, 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 whatever it is. I can bring the machine with me. And while we're doing that, I can help, you know, a couple guys help me. We can knock this out for you because your vents are really dirty. So allergen problems. I mean, you can kind of do the whole thing when you get to that point. That's what John's going to be able to do. But you bundle things. And then the third option is going to be not only A and B, the whole option thing you already had. So it's going to be B, which includes A and, and the other things you added on. It may be replacing something while we're cleaning your ductwork. I mean, who knows? But that's the deal is you want to be able to show value in what you're doing. So when you're throwing discounts out, 
the discounts really are because I'm already there. I don't have to come back out again. I'm going to come out one more time, bring all the stuff I need, and I'm going to do everything for you. So you save yourself trips, right? To part houses or, or whatever the case is. You do it one time and you're done. So that's where you can kind of, you know, when, in the sales process, you can do that. But you've got to be able to show value in every one of your, your items. The repairs are going to have less value, the, the, the minor, the lower deal, because that's what has to be done. And there may not be a lot more you're going to add on to it. But when you start adding things, you can kind of add more value as well, right? So think about things that way when you're doing your estimates. Because when I'm looking at these estimates, I'm seeing a task that gets put in from the computer and very little more is put in there. I mean, very little, is, if at all, sometimes nothing, just the task name and then a price. So that shows me that when we're putting in estimates, we're not really showing any value by typing a little bit more of what you're going to do. Now, I have seen a couple of them that are like almost too detailed. And I also see a couple of them that seem like someone's putting in, and I'm not sure who created the tasks, but it lists all these other things that, um, you know, you're doing a home house inspection and checking the sewer drain, and I mean, it has like this whole big thing. That is kind of creating value, but it's, if you're not going to do that stuff, don't leave it in there. So you can also delete things. If something doesn't have the same warranty because they don't want to pay for it, you know, whatever, you want to take that off. Um, so make sure that when you're writing your estimates, they're accurate to what you're actually going to be doing. And you can embellish a little bit. Because as a customer, I mean, you guys tell me. And, and I'm going to ask, uh, let me see, who, who can I ask? Brian. If I come to your house and I'm giving you an estimate on something, and all it says is I'm going to uh, fix your drain under your sink, right? And I give you a price for it. Hmm. Now, if I say that compared to, and I type in, and, and the words aren't, I'm not exactly going to give you the words I'm going to type in because you have to take a little bit more time with that, but I'm going to say I have to remove the P-trap, replace the gaskets, take out your garbage disposal, replace the hose for your garbage disposal. I'm listing all the things that I actually have to do to fix it. That sounds like when I, the price is the same for both tasks. Which one sounds like there's more value? The one that has more writing that tells you all the stuff that you're actually doing. You see what I mean? That's what I'm trying to get at you is, is it doesn't matter what you are, what task the computer says, because it's going to be just maybe a one line or a couple of lines, you know, a couple of words. But if you have to take something apart, so i got to take, to do a, an HVAC repair, let's say on a, well, let's go to a furnace repair. Okay, so there's a problem with the heat exchanger. So, how can you write that, Mike? Kind of give me a way to write that out that would show value. Show that it's going to take you time to so do what you have to do. To actually test it? like test The it whole thing. Crash. What do you have to do? Uh, remove and replace lower assembly. Okay. Use camera inspect visually on the lower first tube. There you go. Spray down with water and soap. Inspect for any water seepage into the first tube. Keep going. And then you'd, uh, you can do a match test if you put everything back together. But but then you also have to put it all back together. So even if that's the last step before you put it back together, then it's going to have to you know reassemble. You know, it's just it. instilling to the so, customer that we're doing something. Exactly. So what are they getting for their money? You see what I mean? The question is, what am I spending this amount of money for? Whatever it is. And if you have these tasks when you're giving an estimate that look like one line, one line little nothings. And it may be a lot of work in that, but the customer doesn't know it. So all of those tasks can be edited. You guys can add and embellish and everything else. Now don't put something in there that we're not doing, because then if the customer ever comes back and says, well, they said, it says right here that they did this, this, and that. Ryan will detail for <laughs> yeah, You know, <laughs> now watch my car. But in the estimates, the same way. If we're going to do the duct work and everything else to show value, I mean, the best of the best that I've worked with in this process, when they write out their estimates, take the time to write out their estimate so that they can see the value and the estimate that's going to be done, the work that's going to be done, they sell so much more. And I'm telling you, it goes from here to here. And it's not hard to do. You have to take that time and give them each option but make sure that you're showing value in each option with what you write. Right. Okay. One, one that I just finished for Kevin, 
if you notice, it kind of is a one line, that removing and replacing condenser. Mm -hmm. You're removing and replacing refrigerant. There's an option code in there. You need to put that in. You need to put relocate condenser, reconnect electrical. You need to put all those line items in there. there because they get a bid and they're going to look and go, holy shit, why is there eight things on this just removing a condenser? What is that little? Well, there's, <laughs> there's eight things that I'm doing. <laughs> all right, so. If you line item them, then... For, here, here's it. another example. This is for the plumbing side, because I see this one, too. Right. All right. Busted, Sarah. Yeah, I put one line on. Of course, that one doesn't work. Put in water <laughs> heater. <laughs> Install water heater. Repipe house. Yeah. Yeah. Repipe's the worst because it is one line. I know yeah. it's like 25,000. Yeah, yeah, but you could, you could run it. Here. Here's one. Line. Pull and reset toilet. Right. How much yeah. we charge for that? Uh, isn't it 364 or something? I'm just going to put 350 ish. Yeah. I mean, is there a 324 or 3? I don't remember exactly, but. 375. Okay. Yeah. So. That's one that you blow up too. Now, yeah. so so what, what what can we put on here instead? So this, this one here is our, our pull and reset toilet, three hundred fifty bucks. You tell a client, I'm just going to take your toilet up. Here's what it sounds like. I'm going to take your toilet up. Leave it right there. Leave it right there. Okay. So why would you? First of all, why would you pull and reset a toilet? There's a couple of reasons why you pull and reset a toilet, right? Change the waxing. Because it could be a leak. Change the flange. But normally, if there's a leak, what does that mean? Is there a clog? Possibly. Could be a clog. I mean, so you could pull a toilet to be snake in it through the toilet because they don't have a clean out, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a possibility. But what can we put here instead, Sarah? You can put. Let's, let's embellish. You know, wax seal. Okay. Replacement. Turn on coffee. water stop. Okay, so we have to replace. Empty. We have to replace out. the. We have to replace the wax yeah, seal. Base. Yeah, I blow it up too yeah. because sometimes if you just say, "Oh yeah, we're just going to pull off the toilet," and you what about what about bolts? Yeah, yeah. So we're also going to we're going to we're going to pull. Let's say pull the toilet. So now we're going to take out pull and re, pull and reset and just say pull a toilet or remove toilet. Okay, so that's one item. Now we have replaced the wax seal and replace the bolts. Right. I say the bolts level first. Right, bolts. I'm already talking. Sir's out. Okay, what else? Oh, you forgot. You better turn off the water first. What else you got? Twenty dollars. You got to empty the basin of water. Yeah. Of okay, course. so but here, here's an, here's another thing. So level it, level it out too. Okay, so don't forget to flush to make level sure everything goes uh, out. Level level with Le shims. Level toilet with shims. Never do I have to do that. Never do I ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that bothers me. When it's all rocking, I'll be like, I'm shimming the shit. <laughs> Cock around, okay, toilet base. Uh, <laughs> check gasket. Yeah. Check uh, replace gasket. And now, while you're, while you're doing this, here's where the value comes in. And that was a great one right there. I'm going to inspect the flapper, the fill valve, the angle stop, and the supply line. Now, when I say those things, and now I have to come to the client and say, I need to replace your flapper, or your fill valve, or your angle stop and supply line. They've already seen that. That's part. They they just see that you're inspecting it. So you're putting here inspect, and then all the different things. You know, angle stops, supply. We're going to inspect flapper, fill valve. Yeah. Right. So now, if I have all that stuff on there, angle stop, mm -hmm. angle stops on there. But if I if I put all that stuff on there, I've already planted the seed. I told them that I'm inspecting this. So now, once I've inspected the angle stop and supply line on here and show them what kind they have, one of the tricks we used to do is have an old angle stop and supply line that we took off of a that we actually you know replaced. And you know how they're plastic, the ones you crank. Right, the gate valve type. Those things break real easy. We've even had, we've even shown customers how easy they break. Show, they break real easy, or they get stuck. Get one that's stuck, but they, you know, that you find is stuck. So when they try to turn the water off, they can't. Their house can just flood out. So then you also have a new one with you, like a doll quarter turn, real nice one, and a stainless steel hose. And we used to just have a little bag that we bring them in, like a little uh, bank bag. You have the old one in there and the new one in there. So let me get one out of my truck and I bring it to them and sh sh show them the difference. This needs to be replaced. You know, because first of all, I got to pull and reset the toilet. 
<laughs> this is, there's also, what, what else do you have to do to pull reset the toilet? I didn't even put it in here. So when you, re to remove the toilet, before you even remove the toilet, you've got to do what? Drain the water? Drain the water. Drain turn the water. Turn the angle stop. You gotta turn off the water. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you have to do. And when you drain it, usually use a, a vacuum, so you can use a sponge, or whatever the case is, but you gotta drain it. When you take off the, when you take off the supply line, now you can show them. And what I always say on the supply lines, I don't know where I lost my cap, but I'll have to find it later. Um, on the supply lines, do you guys know how they have the little rubber piece in there, right? Right inside the... Okay, so when you tighten that on to your angle stop, what basically happens is it, is it puts a groove in there, right? So in that groove, that groove will, will stay sealed as long as you don't remove that flex line. When you remove it, do you think you're ever going to line it up exactly the same way and tighten it to the exact same point that it was before so it has the same pressure on that rubber gasket? It's not. So I would almost always recommend changing at least the supply line if they have a good angle stop, or both, every time I did one. But if I'm writing all this stuff down on what I'm doing for 350 bucks compared to just pull and reset toilet, do you see the value that you're showing here? And you're also planting seeds. That's the key to making this work. HVAC and plumbing is the same. The more you embellish in what you're doing, because there's a lot of work involved in what you do, and they don't realize that when it just says pull and reset toilet. Okay? So <clears throat> when they see all these different things that you have to do, and you're inspecting these other things while you're there, because you have to take them apart to look at them, and you can look at them as, you, as you're taking them apart or whatever the case is, you have to go in the back of the tank to drain it, the last bit of water out of there, so of course you're going to inspect the flapper and the fill valve and maybe even, you know, the handle, <laughs> whatever. But you're inspecting the entire toilet. So make sure that you embellish that way when you do your estimates. So that way you plant the seed. And now when I have to change out the fill valve or the flapper or all of it, maybe they, maybe they need a whole new toilet. You know, I mean, who knows? That can be one of the options. Um, and because you, you can say it's not cost effective to replace all the stuff that needs replaced on your toilet. You know, before I put this back on, I can go get you a toilet right now, and this will be the price for that. Because I've inspected all these things. But you're planting the seeds. That's the key to this. It's creating a history too for, you know, right. back. back. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out at you so you guys understand what's not happening a lot of the times. Because I'm seeing, I'm going into estimates and looking at them. Um, and the follow-up, like I said, going forward, you guys have got to put on the follow-up, like, I'm going to follow up on this day, reschedule that estimate for that day, and then follow up. If not, we'll print out the estimates and we can give, you know, let John, make sure John's aware of it, and let John follow up. Because if he's involved in a sale, he wants to follow up and he wants to say, hey, just because we haven't closed it today, I, how many times does it take to, to close a sale? Sometimes one, but after... When do you stop? When do you stop asking? When they pretty much tell you. When they tell you no, <laughs> completely no. And then they say it again, and then they say it again, and then they say it again. You know, I mean, you don't give up. So unless the job's been done and there's no, no nothing else to do, I mean, there's a thing on Tina's desk that talks about that. How many times does it take to ask for the sale? You know, it might take six. So oh, yeah, yes. she has a little percentage chart. Yes. She has a percentage chart. That's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. Just right. speaking from automotive, nobody wants to fix what they don't have to. Right. So if the system's working and you get it running, they don't want to dump board it. They don't want to clean the coil. Right. They don't want to do anything. Right. But if you keep poking at them, <laughs> eventually yes. they might decide they got a little extra money and they'll do it. So, so Mike, when I'm, I'm going back to what you were saying and your, your explanation of what you were doing. Yeah. So what you could have added to that is what you're inspecting as you're taking it apart to get to the part that you're getting to or what's right next to it or right in front of you without actually doing, I'm not going to inspect, um, I'm, I may not be inspecting something that I'm not going to take apart and, and really look at, so but if I'm taking this apart, the test wheel. lower cap, test, there you go. test motor, inspect induction draft motor and safety switches, there you go, perform furnace safety inspection, right. Breaking so rather than just saying just, just saying the basic yeah, thing, sir. add on. Yeah, mandatory. I can't put a 15-year-old furnace back into service exactly. unless I test the heat exchanger. Well, exactly. Well, there's times that you just say that, like, I'm gonna, you can't do it. 
Because yeah. that's your reputation. It's like, way. well, yeah, I fixed well, the problem with your right. furnace, but it's 30 <laughs> years old. I yeah. have to do this if I'm going to put it back into service. Exactly. And if they fight you on it, you go, well, I blocked it out. You're yeah. free to call a second opinion. I can call the gas company out here if you'd like. They also do inspections. I don't know if you guys know, but if you ever have a questionable heat exchanger, they will come check it. Right. They'll red tag it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nine times out of ten, the gas company will turn the gas off. And they'll turn the gas off to the house. They check this out. They don't have an hour to tag up. You're done. All right. So anybody have any questions? Really want no heat call. Everyone gets that? What's going on? Okay. So please, going forward, that's what I'd like to see. I'm going to be inspecting them, so I want you guys to embellish. I want you to put down what you're going to do for the client. That also plants the seeds. So then when it comes to the sale for John or for Sarah, it's going to be a lot easier for them to sell if you have this in there. Yeah, he inspected it, and look, it's, it's bad, whatever it is. I mean, that was a simple example, but you, can saw, you see how many more things we have on there compared to just pull and reset toilet, which looks like that piece of cake, right? But you show the value with all the stuff you're going to do, it makes a lot more different, a lot, a lot of difference. Okay? All right, let's get going, guys. Uh, John's going to talk to, I think, the two of you for, for now. Okay.